You know, we often say here on the show, don't we, about how really history repeats itself, and it truly does. And some people might say that is truly the case in the form of the ex-royals Harry and Meghan. A lot of people cite their story very similarly to, of course, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, which we told you about recently. What I find strange about Harry and Meghan is that seemingly, you know, they're going through the very same things that the Duke and Duchess did, but they had a little bit more elegance about them. You know, they didn't seem so desperate inspirational about trying to get in on things. Perhaps Wallace wasn't as greedy as Meghan Markle looking for that extra something. Interested, I'm sure you'll agree. But as you unearth certain things, artifacts, meet people that worked for the Duke and Duchess, as I have recently, that is, of course, Wallace and the former king, you get to see exactly how Meghan Markle and indeed Prince Harry are literally mirroring their image, their move into the limelight as ever. Let me explain. To see you today and as ever, thank you. Well, have a lovely wave. We are in the beautiful gardens here of the Royal Station Hotel in York, in North Yorkshire. Beautiful, can you see? Just absolutely divine. And uh, just, yeah, you know, you just come away and think, wow, it's nice to step out of London sometimes, let me tell you. As much as you love the capital city and everything that goes on around it, there are moments when you think, enough, you know, you need to get away, get some Yorkshire air. Yes, for all those that are listening, you know what I mean. Yes, absolutely. Pork pie, sausage roll, bit of gravy. Suddenly, <laughs> puts hairs on your chest. Has it done yours, missus? Yes. <laughs> you know what it's like, though? It's true, isn't it? You get back and you think, oh, lovely. You know, but this is a beautiful spot if you are looking for somewhere all free. You can just sit here and just enjoy these beautiful gardens with your flask, as I'm doing. Don't tell anybody, though, will you? Somebody might come out and say you've got to pay, Neil. A little bit like, of course, the former royals known as the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. We told you recently about how Wallace was desperate to sort of have her story turned into a Western musical, all via the impresario, multi-talented, of course, Noel Coward. I mean, she even cast her eyes over Terence Rattigan and even Ivan Avello at one point, you know, because she felt her story was big. But what's really interesting, and I'm going to unearth, unearth a lot more of these stories, in fact, for you, simply that she was really ahead of her time. And she did, unlike Meghan, though, get offered things that actually Meghan's having to fight for. This is the difference in their story. You see, what's fascinating about this particular story is that Wallace Simpson, at the height of her fame, was approached really to write a book. And at first it was all about, you know, good living and throwing the best social occasions, what to do in a crisis in a social evening, what to wear, you can imagine. And I think this would have sold very, very well, in fact, across Europe, maybe even, you know, as a sort of blacklisted one over here in the United Kingdom. Them. Obviously, they were still sort of, shall we say, um, not particularly welcome. You get the picture. But what's interesting and what emerges is really this, that a book publisher decided that they wanted Wallace Simpson to write this book. As I say, all about gracious living and what it was going to be like and how to give the best parties. And it was very much in vogue of that period, late 40s, 1950s, because of her power and because of who she was. They offered a lot of money. But apparently this sort of came to the problems of they wanted to pay for the book, you know, they would give her an advance, that sort of stuff. But they weren't keen on the fact that Wallace wanted to have, and this is where I find it fascinating, multiple changes of costume, makeup, hair, jewels. She got to keep the lot. Uh, there was a certain photographer like Beaton who must have been uh, instructed to take these pictures. And then she would, you know, with all of these pictures, throw out a few bon mots about what to do in a crisis when your ball doesn't go particularly well or what orchestra to sign you know you can understand I mean this is the heyday of that particular period the two publishers that were vying for this balked at this because they could see that while the advance was a lot of money to actually give away the jewels the makeup the gowns that could run into thousands and she wasn't overly keen on the idea of promotion she felt a little bit like Meghan Markle that that would just sell her name alone Wallace Simpson you know the Duchess of Windsor. They were allowed to put that on the book and that was the problem. Now what happened was it all sort of frittered away over that particular situation and then what happened was truly this and I find this fascinating in itself. A few years later the same publisher came up with the same book, the same plot idea for none other than the Hollywood legend that was the late and brilliant Joan Crawford.
and she ended up writing her own book called Joan Crawford, My Way of Life, virtually mirroring the idea of exactly what was going to happen to Wallace Simpson. And the idea really was that she met Wallace Simpson and then got, you know, an idea planted in Joan's head, times of difficulty in the early 1970s, and that's exactly late 60s, 70s, when Joan decided to write said book. So unbeknowingly, Wallace basically asking too much, made sure another Hollywood legend souped it up and put it out. Now, Joan's book wasn't a glittering success to start with, but now it's become a collector's item. The same thing, of course, could have happened to none other than the Duchess of Windsor. You see, sometimes it's too hard if you're too greedy. Take note, Meghan and Harry. Neil Sean in the very heart of York.